and welcome to Path Made Easy. Today's example is a sebaceous lymphadenoma. Now this is quite a rare tumour um, and it has some quite nice features to help diagnose it. So we're just going to focus on this slice here and you can see that in keeping with its benign nature it's very well circumscribed. Now when we zoom in you'll see why this tumour gets its name. The lymphadenoma aspect is because it has this very well formed lymphoid stroma and it's an adenoma because it has these little duct-like structures being formed, these little nests of cells that look a little bit like a basal cell adenoma in places, but we've definitely got adenomatous kind of proliferation within this lymphoid tissue. Um, and then when we look more closely, we can see that there are some larger cells with pale cytoplasm and they represent the sebaceous element of this diagnosis, so a sebaceous lymphadenoma. It's not uncommon to see um, keratin pearls and keratin production within this tumour and in some areas you can see that that epithelium looks slightly squamous in nature. As such, you just need to be careful that you're not dealing with a mucoepidermoid carcinoma, but there are no mucus cells in this particular tumour. It wouldn't harbour a mammal 2 translocation either. And obviously we're looking at something that's got sebaceous cells and a well-formed um, lymphoid stroma as well. So I'm just going to show you another area here so you can see the variability. In this particular field, we've got lots of ductal structures. As I said, um, the basal cells seem to be quite well formed, like in a basal cell adenoma. But perhaps here, the sebaceous elements aren't as well formed. But as you saw earlier, they are present in places. So this is a benign salivary tumour, and this is a sebaceous lymphadenoma. I'd like to thank Pathogenesis for hosting the histology. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, Path Made Easy.